Alright, what is going on everyone? Pi Studios here. Uh, I'm going to be covering how to run the Sonic Unleashed recompilation on Steam Deck. I'm just going to show that it does in fact work real quick. It is gorgeous. Like, drop dead gorgeous here on Steam Deck. Let me actually, before I do that, let me show you some settings. So currently, I'm running it at 720p. 75% res scale, and I have the FPS locked at 90. I do have a Steam Deck OLED, that's why I was doing that. Um, if you're just on a normal LCD, um, for one, I would recommend 1280 by 800 just so it fills the deck screen, but capture card, so 720. 75% um, res scale, I only did that to get closer to 90. Uh, if you're on an LCD, just put it at 100% and it's perfectly fine. Uh, my settings, 50% brightness, that's just default. Uh, 2x MSAA, in my opinion, is enough for the 7-inch screen. There's no need to have any more because your your performance will tank. Anti-aliasing for transparent objects, I have off. It doesn't really matter, I don't think. Um, and then shadow resolution, I have set to 1024. It's going to be a little bit better than the original game, I believe. It actually looks the same. It doesn't really matter. And then... This is entirely of the personal preference. I like Bicubic just because it looks less jagged. Motion Blur, I kept it original. And then I have the Xbox uh, green tint off. And then I do have the aspect ratio unlocked. So whenever you're running on the Steam Deck screen, even in cutscenes, it will take advantage of the 16 by 10 aspect ratio, which is pretty damn cool. But let me actually go into the Steam desktop so I can show you how you can do this for yourself. Okay, so now that we are on the Steam desktop, there's one thing that you're going to want to do, at least in my opinion, to make this significantly easier, you're going to want to have, at the very least, a keyboard and mouse. Ideally, you do this on an external screen, but that's not necessarily a requirement, more so just something I recommend, but you absolutely 1000% should be using an external mouse and keyboard for your sanity. But... If you're insane, you don't have to. Also, one thing I did forget to mention, you're going to want to obviously get the files onto the Steam Deck. You can technically put your stuff on a Google Drive from another computer, but what I would highly recommend is either a thumb drive, a USB-C thumb drive, or just putting your micro SD into your main PC, getting the files on there, and then from there putting it back into the Steam Deck, so from there you can download it in a relatively quick manner. Um, but yeah, once you have everything that you need set up, mouse and keyboard, you're going to want to go to Chrome. Once we have Chrome opened up, you're just going to want to look up Unleashed Recomp. Just make sure you're going to GitHub and make sure that you are downloading the game from nowhere besides this GitHub because you have no idea what other people have done when you download it from an unofficial source. Make sure you're getting it from the GitHub. But once you're at the GitHub, you're going to want to download the flat pack. Do not download the Windows version. It might work, I, it's not even worth trying because the, obviously there's a native version, so you should use the native. Uh, so use the flat pack. Once that is downloaded, you're gonna wanna click this guy right here, open. It's going to more than likely open this up. So what you're gonna do is click arc, and then it's going to show you obviously what is inside the zip file. So you're just gonna wanna click on this here. And then this is going to open up the Discover Store. All right, now that the Discover page is open, what you're going to want to do on this page, it's going to be at the top right, there's going to be a button that says Install. So you're going to want to click that. If it asks for a password, that is your password, like your root password that you set up whenever you went into Steam Desktop. Now, you may not necessarily have a password. If you don't have a password, I don't know what that will do. I don't know what that screen looks like. But if you have a password, just put it in and you're fine. It may ask for it multiple times and it may take a little bit to install. For me, it took like 10 minutes. Um, for some people, it took a lot less. So I don't know what that was about. But once you have it installed, close out of this. Then you're going to want to look up Unleash Recompile. Now for me, obviously, because I have it set up, it's just going to actually open the game. But we do not want that. So I'm going to show you what it looks like on Windows. It is going to be the exact same in Linux. Okay, so once you have the installer open and set up, what you're going to want to do, obviously choose your language, click next, and then it's just going to tell you that you need a 360 copy of the game. What I would personally recommend is if you're able to, if you have a 360, obviously just rip your disc, because you're a Sonic fan, you have the game. Just rip your disc. If you do not have an Xbox 360, 
what I personally did was I have a local retro game store that actually, you know, still stocks used 360s or like refurbished 360s. Buy one of those and pretty much any model will work for getting the, um, the rip of the game. Uh, there's actually a tutorial made by one of the people involved with the mod. He showed actually a really good way of ripping the disc without even needing to hack the system, which I thought was really cool. Um, but yeah, just do that. Get a used 360 locally, or even like eBay if you're willing to wait. Um, get a used 360, rip the game. If the place has a return policy, feel free to take advantage of that. If they don't, just either keep it, give it away, sell it, whatever. But... Ideally, we do not want to get this illegally because that sends a message to Sega that, oh, we need to take down more ROM sites, we need to harass these people hosting anything, whether it be illegal or not. So please, please, please do not distribute illegal copies of the game. Please just do everything above board. <laughs> but yeah, so once we're done with that, click next, then you're going to want to do, you can technically do either. I would really recommend doing add files. Add folder gave me nothing but problems. So I'm gonna do add files. And this is just gonna say it's like the digital dump. You can do, technically, you can do a decrypted ROM or you can do just normal ISO. Um, I actually don't know what I have on my computer at the immediate moment, so we will see what it ends up being. Okay, so let's just give it the ISO, that's fine. All right, so now we have the game in there. Now we need the update. So again, you're gonna to wanna to do add files. And then, as far as the updates go, I believe you can still get that for free just from the Microsoft Store. Um, even though the servers are down, I think they're still allowing re-downloads. Pop in the update file, and then boom, you're good there. This part is where it gets a little tricky, a little interesting. You should, you should get the DLC. You do not have to, but not only does it enable the best quality assets in the game, it also affects uh, how stable the game is. There were reports of the game crashing without the DLC, and to fix it, you just needed the DLC. So, um, yeah, it doesn't... You technically don't need it, but you should still do it regardless. Let's give it the DLC files as well. Can I just do that? They're invalid. Okay. I wonder if I can just do add folder. See, I was having nothing but problems with this. Yeah, it, it, like, even though the folder has the DLC files in it, it says they're invalid, so I don't know. What? Oh, well, I'm stupid. They're compressed. No wonder they're not working. Okay, yeah, no, add folder's still broken. I could just be doing something wrong. Um, I, I don't know. But yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a tedious process if add folder isn't working. You're just gonna have to manually <laughs> go into every folder, click one by one, and just add file. Once all the DLC is in, you're gonna wanna hit next. And then it is just going to tell you, hey, this is going to take up this amount of space on your computer. Um, I have it on my C drive, which is why <laughs> which is why it's going to take almost the rest of my drive. Uh, that's fine, though. I'm just going to move it. Now, I will say, on the deck itself, the way flat packs work, it has to be on the main storage. It cannot be put on a micro SD without essentially wasting your time. In my opinion, there's no real point to even trying to bother. And thankfully, the install is actually pretty quick, um, and that's literally it as far as getting it getting it going. Um, from there, like I showed earlier, you just modify the settings to whatever you want, and that's really about it. I'm going to show some gameplay of the Steam Deck build real quick. Um, let me switch back to my capture card. Before I end the video off, there are a couple things that I do want to mention. Obviously, once you install the actual game files from your ISO or your decrypted ROM, you can delete all that stuff, and I'll actually do that right now. So I could use the storage. So yeah, I'm just going to delete the ISO off my Steam Deck because there is literally no reason to have it. I don't know what that is. I think that's just junk from macOS. And one more thing I do want to show you is that I actually have mods working. Now, it's not something that I did special or anything. Hedge Mod Manager 8 is currently in beta, and that beta build was literally updated yesterday when this port came out to support the port. So what you have to do to get that, just look up Hedge Mod Manager 8. Uh, Chrome, you don't need to update. Leave me alone. So you just look up Hedgemon Manager. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it is the second. 
Okay, I'm just blind. On the Hedge Mod Manager page, if you scroll down, it says Linux Steam Deck, you're gonna wanna get Hedge Mod Manager 8 because the older versions are running through Wine and Wine is just kind of a mess for this, so just don't. Go to the releases page. There's gonna be Hedge Mod Manager 8.0.0 Beta 1, literally came out yesterday. You're gonna wanna click that and then click the flat pack here. And then once the flat pack is installed, it's gonna be the same thing. Just click open. Okay, once this page opens up here, click Discover. It's going to bring you back to that store that we were at earlier. It's going to be the same song and dance. Just click the Install button up here. It may ask for your password. I don't remember. Um, but yeah, once you do that, then it just installs. It's fairly no fuss, thankfully. So then you just want to type in here, Hedge Mod Manager. And if you have Hedge Mod Manager 7 installed, you can leave it. I'm personally just going to leave it because I have it set up for Frontiers and I don't want to mess with it. But I'm just going to leave that for the moment and then just open up 8. Now that we're up and running, uh, thankfully the Hedge Mod Manager actually found where the Unleashed recomp was all on its own. It should do that for you too. If it doesn't... Um, Thankfully, it's not too hard to find, I don't think. But the treat that I was actually talking about specifically was that I have actually made a Steam Deck button mod. You may have noticed it earlier, but I actually have the Xbox 360 buttons replaced with buttons that are more reminiscent of the Steam Deck. Credit goes out to Starlight DX and Average Burger Boy. Both of them helped me get that running, and the assets are from a mod made by Starlight, I just slightly modified them. So yeah, no, it's not anything too crazy, but it does look pretty nice. Before we go back to Gamescope though, what I'm going to show you is how to actually get the Unleashed recomp within Gamescope itself. So what you're going to want to do is type in Unleashed, and then it's just going to pop up. Right click, and then you're going to want to do Add to Steam. I already have it, so I'm not going to click it, but once you hit Add to Steam, that is it. It just adds it to Steam, and yeah, <laughs> real simple, ain't it? All right, so as you can see, obviously, I had the Steam Deck buttons down there at the bottom. So everything looks as it should. Uh, I might make buttons for the white Steam Deck, although I am lazy, so probably not. Uh, I don't know. But yeah, let me just show off. Let's do Missouri. I will say this mod is incomplete. Obviously, it's showing an Xbox controller. Um, I'm going to change that. Uh, not immediately, really. There, I don't really think there's a need to, because it does function. I was more worried about pure functionality rather than prettiness of it. Um, I will say, this mod, at least for the time being, is never going to be fully complete. And it's actually not my fault this time. It's not, because I'm lazy. What it is, is that the way the game is compiled, the assets for the HUD, at least for new HUD elements are stored within the EXE itself, which is not like something that I can just get around. I would have to distribute an entirely new build, like a fork of Unleashed Recomp, just to support um, different types of controllers for the HUD. And I am not doing that. I just wanted to put this on Game Banana and like have a good day. Like I wasn't trying to make it all serious and shit because like i don't know how to use github i can't program like i can replace assets that's not a problem but like i'm not trying to uh build <laughs> the source code from scratch to to decompile the exe in order to mess with it like i'm just not doing that so yeah um the game is gonna be partially incomplete as far as the steam deck hud is concerned and that's just gonna be it for the time being um Whenever that does change, if that does change, I will be more than happy to update the HUD in order to use the Steam Deck buttons across the entire game. Ah, oh, gorgeous. Now, obviously, it's a little confusing because I'm on a dual sense right now, but when you're actually on the deck, it is like, it's awesome.
All right, let's get it. What? I, okay. I'm just not gonna question that, I guess. I literally hit, oh, I hit X. I hit cross on the dual sense, which is X. Huh, <laughs> okay, I'm dumb. All right, well, either way, it works. Um, game works, controller mod works. Uh, at least for this immediate moment, I don't really know how Game Banana works, so I am just going to, like, leave a link in the description, like a Google Google Drive or something. Uh, yeah, I, I might publish it on Game Banana. The problem is that it's using a whole bunch of other people's, like, assets and stuff. So I don't know, like, not the legality, but I don't want to, like, have people mad at me because I took their assets and made it look like a Steam Deck controller. I don't know. I'll probably just ask permission. This has been very, very amazing to experience the last 24 hours. Having a fully recompiled Sonic Unleashed for computers, it's just amazing. Hats off to Dario, hats off to everybody else responsible for this. Uh, specifically, the, the whole team is called Hedge Dev. Uh, you guys are absolutely amazing. Before I head out, I do want to mention my lone Patreon supporter, Azur Crystal. If you would like to join her, I will put the link to the Patreon in the description. But yeah, that is pretty much going to do it for me. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.